Hello, hi, welcome back to another video. Um, man, I've, I haven't done this in a while, so I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing anymore. Okay, hi. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Olga. I have fibromyalgia and chronic migraines and um, other things as well. And if you would like to know more about those topics and keep up with what we talk about on this channel, then you are welcome to subscribe. And whilst you're doing that, make sure to ring the notification bell because that will let you know whenever I upload a new video. Uh, because I don't really upload on like a strict schedule because this whole chronic illness thing means that yeah, yeah, life just doesn't always work your way. So. So today I'm going to be talking about chronic migraines and kind of some of my experience with that But just before we get into that I want to like have a little catch-up moment where I want to talk to you about like what has been happening right now uh, So I'm not going to be vlogging for the next like week or two um, or until this kind of whole like virus thing calms down because uh, at the moment my partner is also working from home uh, we are a little bit scared because obviously we don't know how the virus is going to interact with my other illnesses and According to the information that we have at the moment people with existing pre-existing conditions are more at risk of more intense illness and also the fatalities have all been of people who are pre um, had pre-existing conditions, so I definitely want to keep myself safe and we are kind of doing that and both working from home just to keep make sure that I am safe and so I don't feel comfortable um, vlogging. I know my partner doesn't want to be on camera and so that it just makes it easier I think. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that while this whole thing is going down uh, I won't be posting any of the orders that you place on Etsy. You can still place orders if you want to, and I'm still adding things to the shop because obviously I am still making stuff, but all the orders are going to be postponed until the time that the virus calms down. So yes, um, if you want to still place an order, you can do that. If you want to wait until everything calms down, you can also do that. Uh, but if you do place an order, I will keep like updating you on what is happening and I will let you know once I do like post it obviously. So yeah, that's like the housekeeping that we have to do. Let's get into this video, which I'm sure you've seen the title. It is my kind of uh, chronic migraine routine. Um, this is like the stuff that I do and how like I have kind of a little bit changed my lifestyle and my routines to try to avoid having more migraines or try to like keep the migraines to a minimum. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I'm definitely sure that mine are related to my fibromyalgia uh, because I've always had migraines. I've always had a lot of headaches and stuff, but it got a lot worse when I got sick. So yeah, um, I've now been um, followed by a neurologist who specializes in headaches for the last like nine months, I think, almost a year. Uh, we've noticed that I have a headache every single day um, and they will be different in, ver in intensity and stuff, but they're not connected to like my cycle. They're not, so we can't really figure out what causes them um, because I have a lot of triggers and sometimes those triggers are sometimes triggers and then sometimes not. So I feel like a lot of us have that problem as well where we sometimes have that trigger and sometimes not. I think it also happens often with my IBS like where a cer certain food is sometimes a trigger and sometimes not a trigger and that can be really infuriating because like I just I don't know what to do to help my body. I have been able to decrease the intensity of my migraines so whereas now I maybe have like one or two like really bad migraine days like a month maybe. Um, sometimes like three. I used to have like at least one or two a week. So we have been able to like decrease the intensity and the um, frequency of those really, really bad headaches um, or bad migraines. Uh, because for me, like I have a headache constantly uh, and then when it gets worse, it's, it's a migraine. And I know that that's not really correct because technically I always have a migraine because that's kind of like the thing is that you're basically always having migraine and migraines are different to headaches, but it's just like easier for me to explain that like when I have, when I say migraine, I mean like laying down in a blacked out room uh, with no noise and no like smells and no nothing. And then when I mean 
When I say headache, I mean like today I have a headache, but it's like not that bad. First thing that I had to kind of change was my medication. At the time I was taking a specific medication suggested, I guess, or with the treatment that I was doing with my rheumatologist. And we were actually starting to taper that and to try and go a medication free. And then uh, I was starting to have like really bad migraines all the time. And that's when I went to the neurologist. One of the other symptoms that I went to my neurologist about, which was like forgetfulness and feeling really like spaced out and um, not making sense and really bad memory problems and stuff that was being caused by my medication. So once we got off of that and started taking something different, I've noticed like a really good improvement in that air in those symptoms. And also we started noticing that. Um, well, slowly over time, I've noticed that my headaches have like improved. Uh, if you want to know what medication I'm on, I have made a video about that in my last like neurologist update. I talk about it. If you want to watch all of my uh, health updates, I you can like do my whole medical history. It could be a fun day for you if you want. I don't know. <coughs> yes, the cough is still here. So I was on that medication for a few months, and now I've just started a new one. Um, I don't know if yet if it's helping or not. I haven't like noticed a difference yet but the way that we are looking at it and the way that we are approaching it is that we are doing a medical like drug kind of pharmaceutical treatment at the moment but we have all agreed and when i say all of us i mean like me my doctors and my partner we have all agreed that being on medication is not what we ideally want for me for like the rest of my life particularly because we do want to have children and in order to have children like a lot of the medications that we take for fibromyalgia and for pain and stuff are not advisable to be taking at the same time like particularly one of the ones that I'm on right now is really dangerous if you are if you get pregnant on it uh, it has been known to cause a lot of um, like a lot of problems to the babies like we want to eventually get to a point where we can not be on medication and like manage all of my conditions without medication uh, we're already trying to do that with my IBS like we already kind of try to manage it without medication or without like drugs I guess we use like supplements and things like that to help my gut I guess there's still options to be explored and stuff and the other thing that we've been really careful with throughout this whole process is that I have always been taking supplements um, specifically that are made for the brain and the supplement that I'm on actually works really well with the medication that I take for my headaches because it helps boost the good things that it does for me like the positive factors I guess and it helps to uh, lessen the side effects so it's something that helps and works together with my medication to make it more effective and to make it easier for me to deal with it. So that's something that I definitely recommend looking into and asking your doctor about is like how can you use supplements and things that are a bit more natural to help you with your side effects and to help boost the things that you want boosted. It has been working for me. I don't think that a medication is the solution for everyone and I don't even think medication is the solution for always like it might be the solution for now and might not be for the future so I am definitely not ashamed of being on medication now it's the right thing to do right now um I just want to try to be on medic not on medication like later on in life but if I have to be then I have to be and that's okay um I'm like not one of those people who shames people for being on it or not being on it you do you you're the like expert on your body you know what works best for you so like try what you need to try and like go into it with an open mind that it doesn't have to be forever it can just be for now until you start feeling better and then you can create healthier habits and things that work better for you and then you can leave the medication behind anyway this isn't like a promo to medication. Another way that I have worked to, with my doctor to like track my migraines I guess is she gave me a little calendar and I have to put either a dot, a cross, or a line on those days and like whenever I'm menstruating um, I have to like write down whenever I take my um, emergency medication for my migraines. So basically the dot is whenever I have a mild migraine so I can still do everything that I can that I want to do and it doesn't stop me from living my life which is today then the line is when it's stronger and I can do things but it is already starting to be a bit of a struggle 
and the cross is when I have like I can't do anything even if I want to so those are like blackout days where I am in bed all day whenever I go in um I show her and she writes it in her computer and that's it so far I've only had one day that I didn't have a headache and I was like what and we had a big celebration about that when I went last time so we're looking forward to maybe having a calendar with less filling than what I have now. Other things that she asked me to do and which are actually like my routine. So the first thing that we wanted to change was my sleep pattern. We noticed that I slept really badly, but I also slept a lot. So I would have naps, I would sleep like 10 hours or whatever a night. Um, I just basically slept whenever I felt like I needed to sleep. and that was something that I was like told to do when I was in rheumatology um so when I had a rheumatologist they always advised me to sleep as much as possible and to sleep whenever I need to and all that because like sleep apparently is like the greatest thing for fibromyalgia and like helps you so much and all of this but also sleeping really irregular times and really irregularly it makes your brain really confused it doesn't know when to sleep anymore and then when you're actually in bed it like that kind of makes it easier for your brain to like not turn off i think that's something that is very common in fibromyalgia is that we our brains like never really switch off to sleep whenever we're sleeping so the irregular hours make that even more pronounced and what my neurologist explained to me is that we basically had to train my brain to only sleep in those hours that I wanted to be in bed. Eight hours of sleep, but like actual sleep, not being in bed and not being asleep, you know what I mean? So we had to do that. It was really hard at the beginning because I was so used to like sleeping whenever I needed to that it just made it kind of hard at the beginning and I had a headache and I thought that like I got headaches when I was tired so I thought that being tired would make my headaches worse and it did at first but she was like no we need to like get you used to a good sleep schedule and you have to have good sleep hygiene and that's something that she always asks me about and shames me for not doing well um so essentially I will take a nap if I really really need to but most of the time I'm like forbidden to take naps like I go to bed at the same time and I wake up at the same time every day um, and that at the beginning is really hard like it's really hard to wake up at that time um, and sometimes I'm like I'm not as strict as that like I will sleep in a little bit like I'll sleep for an extra hour or like lay in bed for a bit and rest but I'm not like asleep. I noticed that with time and like as I did train my brain to only be in bed at those times and to rest at those times um, it basically tells your brain like if you want to sleep you're gonna have to sleep now because we're not gonna be able to sleep at another time so do what you got to do and that really really helped and I noticed that I was more productive during the day I had more more energy and my sleep was a lot more restful than it used to be I still had insomnia and I still had like sleep problems like I've always had kind of and like it's normal for fibromyalgia but it just wasn't a big deal anymore. Um, the other thing that I do is I schedule rest kind of to force myself to pace. So I will do a oh, little hamsters out. So I actually have like a schedule for my day of where I like how many hours I spend working, how many hours I spend like doing YouTube stuff, how many hours I spend uh, sewing and making things for my Etsy store and housework and all that. And in between all of that, I have scheduled rest so i will take like 15 20 minutes half an hour depends what the activity was before and i will take that time to like sit down and like play a couple games on my phone or read for a little bit or just like watch some tv and to just like sit down and not do anything because i find that helps with my energy levels because i'm not like constantly moving and constantly doing stuff um but i'm not like having a nap necessarily i'm just giving my body a little while to like rest to slow down to get my heart rate down a little bit and have like a little bit of time off my feet and then i can go and do something else and i feel like that helps with my pain levels that helps with my um overall like fatigue and energy levels and it helps me like keep flares at bay a little bit and have less flares because learning the pace i think is really really important and i feel like with scheduled rest like it helps you 
not have that thing of like, oh, but I should be doing something else. So like if your schedule says you have to be resting, then you're doing exactly what your schedule says. So I feel like that's a really good way for me to trick myself into, into resting. The other thing that I schedule is snacks. And this is also something that my doctor um, told me to do. So something that she found really, really important was that I wasn't eating um, properly. So something that happened to me very often is that I would forget, and so still happens sometimes, I would forget to eat. And the way that that happens, um, it sounds really stupid, but I'm sure you've, I've talked about this I think before in other videos, um, our brain um, doesn't work properly basically. And somehow the signals from our body don't like, our brain doesn't tell us that those signals are being received or it doesn't even receive those signals. So sometimes I will not eat for a long time, like a long, long period of hours, and I don't realize that I'm hungry. And then if somebody talks about food or I watch a video that incorporates food somehow, or I think about food, I will realize that I'm hungry and then I will eat. And oftentimes I would get really nauseous because I was hungry and thirsty and things like that. And basically my body just didn't tell me that I was hungry. Um, so that was really annoying and I would have to be reminded by other people that I had to eat and stuff and it was like starting to become a problem. So something that she advised me to do was put like a memo on my phone every three hours to eat. But like the, the snack doesn't have to be like a meal. It can be like a yogurt, it can be like some fruit, whatever you fancy. So sometimes I'm hungrier when I need to, when it's time for my snack, I'll want to eat something more concise. And sometimes I just want to have like a piece of fruit or a cup of almonds or just like something to keep me going. And I feel like these things in my routine are just like ways to be healthier and that um, I am giving my body a better chance at fighting and at like working with me against the illnesses, if you know what I mean. The other thing is drinking a lot of water. I know it's like the thing for everything. Um, but yeah, she recommended that I eat, that I drink at least one and a half liters of water every day. I don't know how much that is in like other people systems. I don't know. I just realized I have not drank any water today. So something that I have tried to do, what failed today, is like I've bought those bottles from Ikea that are, that are at like a uh, one and a half liter capacity. Basically, I fill that bottle of water in the beginning of the day and then I know that I have to drink all of that by the end of the day. The other thing, and I think is a really important thing as well, is avoiding my triggers. Um, oh boy, here we go. I feel like it depends on where my kind of body is at that day. So if I'm feeling more sensitive, like I'm more fatigued or I already have a stronger headache, I am more sensitive to my to my triggers and if I'm having like a really good day or a really good week, I might be less sensitive to them. Really bright lights. Um, I have some photosensitivity, I have some sound sensitivity, so I get really jumpy and scared of loud noises and they normally give me a headache. I don't like listening to new music because I don't know what's coming and so that scares me a little bit so I tend to listen to the same music over and over because I already know that it's safe for my brain. Stress, noisy places, really busy places like the mall or going to a show. I do still go to those things but I have to be really careful like the day before and the day after. I have to like schedule a day off of like just sitting on the sofa. Whenever I'm in more pain that normally means that a migraine might be coming. Working too hard when I go to water aerobics sometimes causes a flare in my migraines and anxiety also. Also another really big trigger for me is the heat and as I've mentioned I live in Portugal where it gets very hot in the summer. The heat really makes my fatigue worse and for some reason like it just gives me worse headaches. I try to be really really careful with the heat in the summer. I feel like it has generally really helped with my migraines. Like, all of these things together have helped. The sun's setting so I need to go before the light is out. That is everything that I wanted to talk about today. I will be making some more videos on migraines in the coming weeks. I feel like now that we are getting into spring and stuff, starting to have to prep for that stuff. Stay safe out there with this whole coronavirus thing. If you do have any questions or want to talk to me about anything, please don't forget to leave a comment down below so we can chat. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel. If you have not done that already, it would mean so much to me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.